Welcome to the Belize Turtle Watch program. The founding premise behind the program is to determine the level of impact climate change will have on sea turtles in Belize and to identify ways in which to minimize these impacts. Sea turtles have long been able to adapt and survive changes in climate during their evolutionary history. However, Drastic reduction in their numbers due to severe overfishing have caused scientists to be concerned that the impacts of the rapid climate change affecting us all may also be inhibiting the progress that sea turtles are making towards recovery. Warmer air temperatures produce warmer beaches that incubate eggs at higher temperatures, which result in clutches of all female sea turtles. Increased seawater temperatures will alter ocean currents impacting traditional sea turtle foraging grounds and migration patterns, while the rising sea level and more intense storms are resulting in shoreline erosion that make traditional nesting beaches unsuitable. The increasing number of storms will also tire young sea turtles and cause more strandings along our beaches. To determine the level of impact climate change is having on sea turtles, ECOMAR is collaborating with the Belize Fisheries Department, World Wildlife Fund, Protected Areas Conservation Trust, other members of the Belize Sea Turtle Conservation Network, and international partners to carry out the Belize Turtle Watch program. Activities include awareness campaigns, training workshops, and the annual Sea Turtle Census. The census aims to estimate abundance and identify threats to sea turtles by measuring levels of sea turtle nesting, hatching and foraging in Belize annually. In order to be successful, the program relies on volunteers to regularly submit reports of all sightings of sea turtles in Belize, whether on land or at sea. For more than 100 million years, Sea turtles have roamed the Earth's oceans. They are the great ocean migrators, traveling thousands of miles between nesting beach and foraging ground, playing an important role in marine ecosystems worldwide. Sea turtle populations were once described as inexhaustible, with 17th and 18th century mariner records documenting flotillas of turtles so dense and vast that net fishing was impossible. Even the movement of ships were curtailed. In the 1700s, Belize's first capital, St. George's Key, was known to have been a favorite place of business for buccaneers, whose occupation of smoking, drying and salting turtle meat for sale to local logwood cutters, passing privateers, and the occasional pirate was considered an indispensable service to all seafarers and an invaluable support to Belize's early logging industry. A growing taste for sea turtle meat in Europe led to their widespread harvest during the 18th and 19th centuries, which nearly decimated their populations worldwide. Hawksbill turtle shells were especially desirous as they were used to make hair combs, eyeglasses, and jewelry boxes. On the back of the Belize $5 bill is a 1764 map of St. George's Key with four turtle corrals. These turtle corrals relics from Belize's historical trade in sea turtles, possibly our first fishery export, are a unique feature that can only be found on the ends of the piers at St. George's Key. Archaeological excavations on the island in the 21st century also confirm the importance of sea turtles to Belize with the discovery of large numbers of sea turtle bones. Up through the mid-1900s, Sea turtle numbers were further reduced by local fishermen who specialized in capturing them for sale at the local fish markets and for export. Eventually, the numbers and the demand dwindled to the point that fishermen caught sea turtles only to supplement their income. In 2002, Belize joined other countries in the Caribbean protecting sea turtles when we passed new legislation that prohibited the harvest of any sea turtle with the only exception being their use for cultural purposes. Get involved, adopt a reef. Belize's growing marine tourism industry promotes a bountiful reef with healthy corals and abundant marine life, where on any one dive, it is possible to see all three species of sea turtles common in Belize. 
To help keep track of the abundance of sea turtles that rely on our marine environment, divers and snorkelers are invited to volunteer with the Belize Turtle Watch program and they adopt a reef. When you adopt a reef, you agree to submit a report each time you visit your adopted site. These reports should include any observations of sea turtles in the water or on the way to the site. When you see a turtle, look for the distinguishing characteristics that identify the species, take pictures if possible, and then submit your report online at ecomarbelize.org. Apart from species distinction, you can also tell if the turtle observed was an adult male or female sea turtle by the size of its tail. Adult males have long, thick tails and adult females have short tails. It is not possible to determine the sex of juvenile turtles by tail length. You should also note if any flipper tags are observed on the turtles. Flipper tags are used by many researchers conducting recapture studies of sea turtles. If no turtle was spotted, please be sure to still submit a report stating no turtles were observed, since this information is also required to measure abundance. In order to abide by the Belize Fisheries Laws, we remind all volunteers that observations should be made from a distance since it is illegal to harass sea turtles. This means you should not feed, touch, chase, or attempt to hold turtles at any time. Feeding and touching sea turtles alters their natural behavior and should never be done under any circumstances. Identifying Sea Turtles There are seven existing species of sea turtles worldwide, five of which have been observed in Belizean waters. Of the five, three are quite common, the hawksbill turtle, the green turtle, and the loggerhead turtle. Sightings of the leatherback turtle are quite rare in Belize, while the olive ridley sea turtle has only been seen once. The Kemp's ridley sea turtle has not been reported in Belize, but this species is endemic to the Gulf of Mexico, so sightings are possible. The Australian flatback sea turtle, on the other hand, is not expected to ever be encountered in Belize. Sea turtles are identified using the following characteristics the size of the turtle, the number of lateral scutes on its carapace or shell, the shape of the head, the shape of its beak, and the number of prefrontal scales between the eyes. Identifying Hawksbill Turtles Hawksbill sea turtles are commonly found in coral reef habitats where their favorite food grows, sponges. They have a mouth that resembles a hawk's beak two pairs of prefrontal scales between their eyes and four pairs of overlapping lateral scutes. The hawk's bill was once hunted for its valuable shell which was used to make jewelry. Identifying green turtles. Green sea turtles are vegetarians and will be found near seagrass beds munching on blades of what else? Turtle grass. They have one pair of prefrontal scales between their eyes and four pairs of lateral scutes on their carapace. Their shells can also be very beautiful, resembling those of hawksbills. Green sea turtles are actually named after the color of their fat under the skin, probably attributable to all the green grass they eat. Identifying loggerhead turtles Loggerhead sea turtles are commonly spotted on the reef where they hunt for crabs and mollusks. Their strong jaws can easily crush hard shells. They are easily recognized by their large head and five pairs of lateral scutes. While loggerheads nest in Belize, juvenile loggerheads are not common. So if sighted, this would be an important record for our database. Identifying leatherback turtles. Leatherback sea turtles are sometimes observed between Robinson Point and Placencia, in the Victoria Channel or in the open ocean between the atolls. They are the only sea turtle that has a soft leathery shell with prominent ridges resembling the keel on the bottom of a boat. Leatherbacks are the largest and most endangered species of turtle 
found throughout the world, and to date, no confirmed nestings have been reported in Belize. They do, however, nest in Mexico and Guatemala, so it is possible that one day someone will encounter a nesting leatherback in Belize. Identifying Olive Ridley Turtles Olive Ridley Sea Turtles are omnivores, primarily an ocean-going species that get their name from their olive-colored shell. Olive Ridley Turtles have six or more sometimes asymmetrical scutes on their carapace. In the Atlantic Ocean, they are known to nest only in South America, but their distribution in the Caribbean extends to Cuba. The first olive ridley turtle observed in Belize was found stranded in discarded fishing gear off Ambergris Key in 2011. Identifying Kemp's Ridley Turtles Kemp's Ridley Sea Turtles are found in near shore habitat with muddy or sandy bottoms where they eat mostly crabs, fish, jellyfish and mollusks. Kemp's are the smallest of all sea turtles and have five pairs of lateral scutes, just like loggerheads, but don't have a big head, and their carapace is more rounded. They only nest along the shores of the Gulf of Mexico, but so far there have not been any confirmed observations in Belize. Due to their small endemic range, these are the most endangered sea turtles. Both the olive and the Kemp's Ridley sea turtles have a unique nesting behavior called Arribadas. This occurs when hundreds of turtles come ashore to nest at the same time. While this has never been reported in Belize, if anyone witnesses an Arribada, be sure to take pictures and report this observation immediately. Get involved! Adopt a beach! Green, hawksbill and loggerhead sea turtles are known to nest along sandy beaches from Bacalar Chico in the north to Punta Negra in the south and on many of our offshore islands and atolls. Their peak nesting season is generally from June through September, but nesting turtles have been reported during other months, which may indicate that impacts from climate change are already affecting sea turtle nesting behavior. To keep track of sea turtle activity on the hundreds of miles of sandy beaches in Belize, coastal property owners and resorts are invited to volunteer with the Belize Turtle Watch program and adopt a beach. When you adopt a beach, you are agreeing to monitor your beach, keep it turtle friendly and submit regular reports online at ecomarbelize.org. Some guidelines to follow include Remove all litter and logs to enable easier access for turtles. Install turtle-friendly lighting that shines up and not on the beach to avoid deterring nesting females and disorienting hatchlings. Keeping dogs away from nesting beach to avoid disturbing nesting turtles or digging up nests. Monitor the beach each day for new tracks. Submit reports every time your beach is monitored even when no tracks are sighted. Volunteers are reminded that we need to abide by Belize Fisheries laws which prohibit harassment of all sea turtles. This means that you should not touch or hold any sea turtle that comes ashore to nest or disturb their eggs or hatchlings. Identifying sea turtle crawls and nests. When monitoring your beach, look for turtle crawls which resemble tire tracks leading into the sea. Hatchling turtles will also make tracks, but these resemble the track of a hermit crab. Green sea turtles and leatherback turtles make symmetrical tracks. That is, their front flippers will crawl up the beach at the same time. The leatherback sea turtle is much larger, so its track will be much wider than that of a green turtle. Hawksbill and loggerhead tracks are asymmetrical and produce tracks that make an alternate pattern up the beach. Loggerhead sea turtles are generally a little bigger, so if the track has a deeper body pit, then this would be a loggerhead. Sightings of turtle nests are also important. Once you notice turtle tracks on your beach, you may be able to identify the area where the turtle possibly nested. 
Please be sure to report this and we will share the information with members of the Belize Sea Turtle Conservation Network who may visit your beach to confirm the sighting and return after the eggs hatch to measure the hatching success and confirm turtle species. When the hatchlings come out of the nest, it is extremely important that the sea turtles are allowed to crawl off the beach on their own. Females especially need this process of imprinting in order to be able to navigate back to the same nesting beach 30 to 50 to 100 years later. Additionally, all hatchlings are born with enough energy for their swimming frenzy out to sea where they will find shelter and food in weed lines. So under no circumstance should they be kept in containers for any period of time since this will actually reduce their chance of survival. It has been estimated that one out of every 1,000 hatchlings survive to adulthood. All coastal property owners should make sure that all hatchlings are able to crawl off the beach as soon as they emerge from the nest to begin their legacy as the great ocean migrators. Stranded Sea Turtles Both natural and human impacts cause sea turtles to strand. Prolonged strong winds often tire out young turtles while discarded fishing line and gill nets can trap and kill adult turtles. Stranded sea turtles are often seen floating at sea or washed ashore and can be either alive or dead. Volunteers who adopt a beach are asked to especially monitor their beaches during periods of strong winds for sea turtles that may have stranded so that they can be rehabilitated and returned to sea. Anyone spotting a stranded sea turtle should report this immediately to the Belize fisheries because if the turtle is still alive, it can be rehabilitated and released. If it is dead, the cause of death will be identified so existing threats can be minimized. In either case, Time is of the essence, so please monitor your beaches and report all stranded sea turtles right away. The following threats to sea turtles should also be reported to the Belize Fisheries Department and through our online reporting system. Anyone feeding or touching sea turtles while diving or snorkeling. Any sea turtles held in captivity. Anyone harvesting sea turtles to eat anyone selling turtle meat or turtle shell or jewel. The public is reminded that all sea turtles are protected by the Belize Fisheries Regulations and any activities which harass or cause harm to sea turtles should be reported immediately. The data submitted by volunteers in the Adopt a Beach and Adopt a Reef programs will complement scientific studies undertaken by marine park managers and stakeholder interviews which together make up the annual report on Belize sea turtles. The report will summarize sea turtle abundance, threats to sea turtles and climate change impacts on sea turtles. We already know that Belize's low-lying coastline and offshore islands where sea turtles nest are extremely vulnerable. Impacts of climate change such as increased air and seawater temperatures, rising sea level and more intense tropical storms are already affecting nesting beaches, nesting behavior and the productive success of sea turtles. This program will assist the Belize Sea Turtle Conservation Network to identify ways in which these impacts can be mitigated in order to ensure long-term conservation of sea turtles in Belize so that future generations will be able to welcome these great ocean migrators when they pass through our waters. Sea turtles need our help now to ensure that the turtles we are seeing today are not the last. Remember, we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. To find out more about the Belize Turtle Watch program and how you can adopt a reef or adopt a beach, please contact us today at ecomarbelize.org.